Hello everyone and welcome to a new course from Eduonix. Here we are going to see RESTful APIs. This is an introduction. My name is Roman. I am a software and full stack developer for more than 10 years now, developing in different languages and environments from V to PHP. JavaScript, HTML, Java, and Python, to name a few. Right now, I'm working the most with Laravel for the backend and Vue.js for the front end and Bootstrap as well. All right. So let's start with this course. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Okay. So first of all, before we can talk about REST or REST for APIs. We need to know what is an API or an application programming interface. For those who have been programming for a while, I'm sure that you made your application to interact with some kind of API at a certain time or a certain point of your desktop, mobile or web application or website, right? Because uh, APIs are almost everywhere to interact with web with different web services, all right? So we all agree that it is an interface, okay? It is not a library, for example, it is not a source code, it is an application programming interface. As I was saying, it defines interactions between software intermediaries, all right? And it defines the kinds of calls or requests to be made, right? Then we need to know how to make those requests and this is explained from the api documentation okay data formats that should be used in those requests conventions to follow and other useful stuff too okay and one important thing here after the things that we are discussing is that when we are using an api we don't need to worry about the implementation of the API, right? That exceeds the aim of the use of the API. So it involves information hiding and modular programming, right? So this allows the users to use the interface independently of the implementation. Okay, so as long as we are calling to one endpoint it will still and, and the implementation changes but the documentation does not because let's assume that we are refactoring that endpoint all of our clients can still use that api endpoint without any need of changes okay Okay, so this is an application programming interface. Of course, we can have different usages for these APIs. Uh, they are usually related to software library, right? We can find APIs in libraries and frameworks, operating systems. Then we have remote APIs, web APIs, right? Uh, we have APIs almost everywhere. So now that we know what is an API, we are ready to start digging in REST or representational state transfer, all right? So to begin with, it is a software architectural style. And when we talk about software architectural, we are talking about to the fundamental structures of a software system, right? And how to create such structures. 
So we have a software architectural style that defines a set of constraints for creating web services, right? So we have a controlled environment uh, with rules, okay, and different endpoints, for example. So in that way, we can clearly understand how to use it, how to expect and how and what to do with that API, right? So where's the difference between REST or RESTful? They are synonyms and web services implemented under REST called RESTful provide interoperability between systems on the internet. So what we are talking about here is that two different and isolated pieces of software can speak the same language, right? Imagine two machines apart from each other and one speaks German and the other one speaks Chinese, but we can have an API in the middle that understands both languages, okay? So both machines can interact with each other without knowing the specific language or implementation behind those machines, all right? Finally, we are using a predefined set of stateless operations, right? Remember that we have HTTP in the underlying layer, right? And HTTP is stateless. We don't have a state. So we don't have a session information retained by the receiver or the server, okay? All of our session data is sent to the receiver by the client in such a way that every package of every packet of information transfer can be understood in isolation. Okay, so we have a basic diagram here in which we have a client or a computer if you want, and we have a database, and we are not connecting directly to the database, but we are interacting with an API, right? And when I say we, I mean the application that we are building, okay? We can send different HTTP verbs or methods like get, post, put, or delete. We are going to that in the next few lectures. And we receive a response in different formats like JSON or XML from the REST API that is actually in interacting with another database or another REST API service, all right? So here we have a very clear approach of what is a REST API. It provides services to us, the client. Okay, so now we need to define or establish what is the main difference between a website and a web app? Although we can use it like synonyms, they are not quite the same thing, right? When we enter a website, we have, we are asking for all of the, we are asking for the entire page and resources to render each page, right? So we are asking for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and all the resources that we need to show the website in the browser, okay? And this could be a lot of information and large amounts and larger amounts of data, right? When we are using a web app that is connecting to a REST service, for example, we are asking only for a data object. 
So once we have our page loaded, for example, a single page application, when we need to retrieve, for example, five videos, we are not going to reload the entire page, but we are going to make a request to actually retrieve only those five videos. So you can imagine the differences between um, sizes right of information that we are asking in a website and a web app right finally we have six guiding constraints that define a restful system okay these constraints restrict the ways that the server can process and respond to client requests so that by operating with these constraints the system gains desirable non-functional properties and when we say non-functional properties they are properties that specify uh, criteria that can be used to judge the operation of system rather than specific behaviors okay so we are talking about a system level here and not specifics if we have a system that does not fulfill any of the required constraints it cannot be considered restful okay let's start with client server some of you may know the principle behind client server constraints is the separation of concerns okay if we have a separated user interface from data storage, we can improve portability of our interface between different platforms or devices. Okay. If we have our server logic isolated, then we can connect with multiple interfaces to that server and expect the same response so this has lots of advantages because we don't rely in a single application but we can have multiple applications multiple clients mobile desktop for example that interact with the same rest service thus the same server data and logic all right of course this approach provides us scalability as well then we have statelessness and when we have client server communication we have no client context stored on the server between requests right this is statelessness so each request that we make contains all of the necessary information to service the request of course when we have authentication involved uh, the server can transfer the session state to a persistent state so the, the authenticated client can make subsequent requests right third constraint is cacheability and this means that we can save or store our responses in the cache and when an api responds it could have a definition of a definition whether the response is cacheable or not right so the client needs uh, so the client knows how to handle that information and when to make the next request then we have layered system and this means that of course when a client make a request to the server it doesn't know whether it's connecting directly to a database or a load balancer or a proxy right and this is okay to fulfill this for constraint we need to keep things in a way that they won't affect the communication between client and server right then we have a an optional constraint 
called code on demand and this means that servers can temporarily send executable code to the client okay for example java applets finally you have uniform interface and this is a fundamental part of restful system because it simplifies and couples the architecture which enables each part to evolve independently okay and here we have four constraints for this uniform interface the first one is resource identification requests and this means that we have individual resources uniquely identified using URIs, right? And URIs are not the same as URL. URI is a uniform resource identifier, okay? And of course, we can have that resource stored in a way in a database and answer or show that resource to the client in a different way. For example, HTML, XML, or JSON. Resource manipulation through representations. And this means when a client holds a representation of a resource, it has enough information to modify or delete the, resources, the resource's state. Okay. Then we have self-descriptive messages. And this means that each message includes enough information to describe how to process the message. And finally, we have Hypermedia as the engine of application state, or H-A-T-E-O-A-S. And this happens when having accessed an initial URI for the REST application, a REST client should then be able to use server-provided links dynamically to discover all the available resources it needs. Okay, all right, so enough talking about RESTful and APIs for this lecture. I hope you now have a clear understanding of what is an application programming interface and above all, what is a REST or representational state transfer API, right? In the next lecture, we are going to see who or what interacts with these RESTful APIs, right? So this is it for this lecture. Thank you very much, guys.